All right, all right, all right. Welcome to Litscapes, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me once again. Pride Month is coming to a close, but it's never too late to recognize and celebrate queer literature and the authors who produce it. And that's precisely what we're going to be doing here today for this in parenthesis episode. Okay, but before we jump into the discussion and do some memorable passages from queer novels, or rather queer scenes specifically, um, I'm going to share this with you. I just went into the Book Riot website. I, I don't know if you know it, bookriot.com. Um, I like to go on here every now and then. It keeps me up to date on all things uh, literature, but they very um, youth dedication, right? It's it's very YA. Um, and it talks a lot about, of course, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of stuff, but right now I'm seeing, for example, there's, there's you know, on, on censorship, you know, that's a book censor, censorship, that's a big deal right now uh, around the world. Um, and of course, you know, they're celebrating Pride Month and they've got, they've got some stuff, but but I specifically came on here to see precisely what they're doing for Pride Month and queer authors. And I just found this uh, interesting uh, quiz that says, uh, find out which queer superhero you are. So what do you say? Shall we take this? Yeah. See what this what this is about? It sounds, sounds kind of fun, right? Take this queer quiz to find out which queer superhero you are. Um, all right, let's see. Let's see what this is about. Uh, if I had to choose my queer origin story, we have bitten by a gay spider, Galen who crash landed on Earth, blessed by a fairy god drag mother, <laughs> born on Isle of Lesbos, exposed to rainbow radiation, and was a pleasure to have in class. Um, let's go with... Uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, was a pleasure to have in class. That, sound, that sounds weird, no? Blessed by a fairy drag mother. Pick a queer superpower. Speed walking, gaydar, Always having chapstick, flirting, death drops, immune to cold. Can drink iced coffee all year long. I guess a, a, a queer superpower would be flirting. Pick your queer kryptonite. Sitting in chairs correctly. Math, Ticketmaster, country music, gendered clothing. Is Diet Pepsi okay? Let's go with gendered clothing. That's gonna be our queer kryptonite. Choose your means of heroic transportation. We've got flying broom, swanky sports car, teleportation. Teleportation sounds fun, but maybe overdone. Spaceship, subway, and a unicorn. Um, uh, I, I don't know. Let's, let's go sort of against the grain here and pick subway. Choose a color scheme for your super suit. Earthy neutrons, neon and black. Millennial pink, metallics, peacock green, glitter. Um, I guess as a as a queer queero, a queer superhero, neon and blacks got look pretty good. Where's your superhero hideout? A drag queen's closet, a hole in the wall queer bar, the gym, backstage at a community theater. Cottage in the Woods, The End of the Rainbow. Uh, backstage at a community theater. That sounds sounds pretty funny. Choose your animal sidekick. Owl, Arctic Fox, Skunk, Chameleon, Beaver, and Goat. Beaver would be cool, right? I mean, I, I would go for the beaver as a man. Wouldn't be very queer, of course. So let's go with uh, Chameleon. Chameleons are cool. Chameleons are, are awesome. Which queer city will you dedicate your life to protecting? Amsterdam, San Francisco, Bangkok, Melbourne, Puerto Vallarta, or Berlin? 
Eh, Puerto Vallarta, definitely, right? Love the beach, it's Mexico. Pick a superhero who isn't canonically queer, but if you know, you know. It just says no, the IYKYK. Uh, let's go with Wonder Woman, because she's a badass. Pick a comic book action word. Why, why, what's that got to do with anything? Pick a comic book action word, and we have kaboom, wham, pow pow, splush, crash, and zzz. I guess that's just like the, the Z's for sleeping. Let's go with pow pow. I am mystique. Hmm. Your non binary pansexual hero and shapeshifter mystique. You believe the gender binary is a scam, one you don't mind scamming back sometimes. And you know that anti hero just means cooler than your average superhero. Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny. Um, if I had to choose a super, super power for myself, I'd, I'd go with shape shifting. But I, I, I would have thought that's more literary, you know, than, than um, but non-binary pansexual, but all right, well, I guess I'd, I'd be mystique. Anyhow, whatever. Um, yeah, let's talk about queer literature, right? My experience with it, I must admit, is fairly limited. I, I've read some stuff, uh, some very, very good stuff, uh, and I do want to expand on it. Uh, this past school year, uh, I wanted to introduce to the syllabus some, uh, if, if, if not exactly, you know, queer novels and at least some queer authors. And I went with Virginia Woolf and um, to the lighthouse, and it was it was tough. It's it's a tough read. It's a tough read for anyone, but especially you know for a bunch of kids who are not the biggest book lovers, and English is not their first language, and it was just tough. But one thing that they did really appreciate was um, uh, Virginia Woolf's, um, you know, uh, bisexuality. Homosexuality, right? She was she was definitely much more of a lesbian. She was married uh, to a man, loved him dearly, uh, but had numerous uh, affairs with women, especially this this um, woman, uh, Vida Sackville West. They had this beautiful relationship, beautiful love letters that they they exchanged. But um, but yeah, so so my students really appreciated that from her and. Um, I mentioned to them a novel by Virginia Woolf, Orlando, and I hadn't read it back then. You know, it's it's this biography about a, a guy named Orlando, uh, and he's living as a as a guy. He's living in Elizabethan England. This is 16th century. England and he, he travels through time he, he travels through the centuries there's there's some um, uh, uh, some gender bending fun and he ends up as a woman living in 1920 1922 I think it was in the early 1920s England right married with kids um, and, and so the book is presented as a biography, but at the same time is this feminist manifesto. And it's this uh, time travel, uh, sci-fi sort of, you know, um, adventure and love letter. And it's a huge love letter to her lover, Vita Sackville West. So I want to read a, a, a passage from that. Uh, but before before I get into Orlando by Virginia Woolf, uh, let me just, you know, that, that's going to be like the main thing. But I do want to share, first of all, because I, I was recently introduced to this acronym of WLW, Women Loving Women. And, and that really uh, reminded me of uh, this passage from... Why is my light off? 
This passage from one of my favorite novels of all time and by my, I would dare say, my favorite um, living author, Elena Ferrante. And my light's not working. Wonderful. That's weird. Anyhow, uh, I'll check that out later. Why, why is the, why is my light not working on my Kobo? Anyhow, so there is this, again, one of my favorite novels. Uh, it's called My Brilliant Friend. It's from the, um, the, My Brilliant Friend saga, the Neapolitan novels. It's, it's a series of four novels. Uh, some of the best contemporary novels I've, I've read, really. Um, I do have to go back and, and reread them. They're really, really that good. And, and it's basically about these two friends. Uh, Lenu, our protagonist, Elena, and Lila, her best friend, growing up in the slums of Naples. And, and it's a coming of age story. You know, they start out as these little girls in, in these slums. And by the end of the saga, uh, they're like into their 60s, I think, right? And, and, and the, the four novels just basically explore their friendship throughout. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful story precisely about female friendship, about, you know, coming of age, about becoming an artist, about leaving your, leaving your, your, your home that just kind of drags you down, you know, and, keep, and limits you. And anyhow, there is this passage uh, in the first novel that, again, came to my mind when a student mentioned women loving women. And it's a beautiful passage. I want to share that with you right now. It's, it's fairly short. Okay, so just bear with me. It says, I watched her with slow, careful gestures, first letting her squat in the tub, then asking her to stand up. I still have in my ears the sound of the dripping water and the impression that the copper of the tub had a consistency not different from Lila's flesh, which was smooth, solid, calm. I had a confusion of feelings and thoughts. Embrace her, weep with her, kiss her, pour her hair, laugh, pretend to sexual experience and instruct her in a learned voice, distancing her with words just at the moment of greatest closeness. But in the end, there was only the hostile thought that I was washing her, from her hair to the soles of her feet, early in the morning, just so that Stefano could sully her in the course of the night. I imagined her naked as she was at that moment, entwined with her husband, in the bed in the new house, while the train clattered under their windows and his violent flesh entered her with a sharp blow, like the cork pushed by the palm into the neck of a wine bottle. And it suddenly seemed to me that the only remedy against the pain I was feeling, that I would feel, was to find a corner secluded enough so that Antonia could do to me, at the same time, the exact same thing. Oh, right, so it's it's clearly very homoerotic, but this this woman um, narrating, uh, Lenu, at, at this moment, Lenu's gotta be like, 17. Yeah, I, th I think she's like 17. I, th I think she's just graduated high school, is about to start college, and her best friend just got married, and she's helping her take a bath. And and, and one of the things I love about the, the series precisely is that um, it's, it's just about friendship. It's about this, you know, very deep, very sincere love between these two women based on friendship. And there's never anything, you know, lesbian -y about it. But there is this love between them, right? And, and in, in this passage, there is this experience of homoeroticism, which never crosses a line, but it's there nevertheless, right? And and you know this this Lenu loves her best friend Lila, but um, she she still has like uh, you know this this more heteronormative outlook and experience 
but it's there, it's still persistent and it's, it's, it's very secluded, you know, almost as, as that encounter that she's, she wishes to have with her boyfriend. Um, so yeah, so I, that's a passage that came to my mind when thinking about WLW. And then I thought, you know, if there's WLW, is there um, MLM? And uh, that brought me to uh, a novel that I also read fairly recently. Um, really liked it. Uh, it's, it. It's pretty young adult, but, but it's very well written, right? It's, um, I loved it. I loved the book. It's Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. Um, beautifully written, very, very sad, the, uh, very romantic. Uh, and it's about, well, it's about the story of, of right, Achilles, the Greek epic hero, and his distant cousin, I think it was, uh, and lover, Patroclus. Uh, and, and it's a story that's not, not you know, explored enough, uh, deservedly enough, in Greek mythology. But, you know, there's, there's enough to really uh, understand that Achilles and Patroclus, they had something going on, right? And this novel just expands on that. And then again, like I said, it's, it's a beautiful novel. I highly recommend it, um, even though it's, you know, more YA oriented. It's still literary fiction, and it's it's worth a read. And I'm gonna and, I, and the reason why I'm, I'm thinking of this right now, now it's not just men loving men, but um, I actually used this passage with a student for a an IB uh, an IB English test, uh, an oral exam. Um, she the student she chose uh, to work with Song of Achilles. It's one of her favorite novels, and I, I chose this passage to work with, and it's a beautiful passage as well. Uh, again, th this one, you know, the, the, the homoeroticism here is very clear, but it's just, you know, so romantic. It, it really, really gets to you, or it, it should. If, if this doesn't get to you, regardless of your orientation or identity, um, I, I would dare say you're not very human. Right, because uh, even even here, the love between these two men—it's just, it's it's lovely. Um, and again, the, the passage is, is also very short. It says, um, "This is this is the passage as I chose it for the this English oral exam." I will go, he said. I will go to Troy. The rosy gleam of his lip, the fevered green of his eyes. There was not a line anywhere on his face, nothing creased or graying, all crisp. He was spring, golden and bright. Envious death would drink his blood and grow young again. He was watching me, his eyes as deep as earth. Will you come with me? He asked. The never-ending ache of love and sorrow. Perhaps in some other life I could have refused could have torn my hair and screamed and made him face his choice alone, but not in this one. He would sail to Troy and I would follow even into death. Yes, I whispered, yes. Relief broke in his face and he reached for me. I let him hold me, let him press us length to length so close that nothing might fit between us. Tears came and fell. Above us, the constellation spun and the moon paced her weary course. We lay stricken and sleepless as the hours passed. Yeah, so like I said, it's impossible not to feel, you know, the, the love between these guys. Um, and and it, it, it has nothing to do, like I said, you know, with the reader's orientation or anything. It's, it's just, it's, it's beautiful. Uh, and... And um, yeah, no, it, it's. I think this is one of the queerest novels I've read. Um, I've read, I've read quite a quite a few, yeah. But this uh, this one has been one of my favorites, definitely. And it's you know contemporary and 
um, educational, right? I would dare say there's a lot of Greek mythology in there, right? Um, I, I, I would imagine that a, a lot of readers they finish this novel and they they feel incited to go and read Homer's The Iliad, and they should as well. Uh, because it's also worth it. But anyhow, let me finish with Orlando, right, by Virginia Woolf. Again, this novel, um, so we discussed it in class with my students. Even though we read To the Lighthouse and mentioned Orlando, they, they were enthralled by the story of Virginia Woolf and Vita Sackville West and her marriage to uh, Leonard Woolf. Um, she was always faithful somehow to her husband, even though you know, she had these numerous affairs, but with Vita, she had something something special. And this novel, Orlando, like I said, it's it's dedicated to her, it's about her, it's a love letter to her. And it's this, you know, time traveling, gender bending, uh, biography, adventure, uh, that's that's just, it's, it's delightful. It's a, a delightful read. It's very, different from her other work, but at the same time, you know, it, it has this feminist core to it, which is one of the best things about Virginia Woolf. And of course, the, the modernist uh, vein, right, style. Um, I don't know if I would include Orlando in my syllabus um, next year. Uh, I, you know, I do want to go deeper into queer literature and I have something more modern, more recent more enjoyable, I, I, I would dare say, for young readers today. Uh, but this one is also worth a read and I would recommend it. So let me read a, a passage from here. Um, uh, and it's, uh, here it is. <clears throat> Orlando curtsied. She complied. She flattered the good match humors as she would not have done had his neat breeches been a woman's skirts and his braided coat a woman's satin bodice. Thus, there is much to support the view that it is clothes that wear us and not we them. We may make them take the mold of arm or breast, but they mold our hearts, our brains, our tongues to their Nike. So, Having now worn skirts for a considerable time, a certain change was visible in Orlando, which is to be found if the reader will, will look at page 3, even in her face. If we compare the picture of Orlando as a man with that of Orlando as a woman, we shall see that though both are undoubtedly one and the same person, there are certain changes. The man has his hand free to seize his sword, the woman must use hers to keep the satins from slipping from her shoulders. The man looks the world full in the face, as if it were made for his uses and fashioned to his liking. The woman takes a sidelong glance at it, full of subtlety, even of suspicion. Had they both worn the same clothes, it is possible that their outlook might have been the same. This is the view of some philosophers and wise ones, but on the whole, we incline to another. The difference between the sexes is, happily, one of great profundity. Clothes are but a symbol of something hid deep beneath. It was the change in Orlando herself that dictated her choice of a woman's dress and of a woman's sex. And perhaps in this she was only expressing rather more openly than usual, Openness, indeed, was the soul of her nature, something that happens to most people without being thus plainly expressed. For here, again, we come to a dilemma. Different though the sexes are, they intermix. In every human being, a vacillation from one sex to the other takes place, and often it is only the clothes that keep the male or female likeness while underneath the sex is the very opposite of what it is above. Of the complications and confusions which thus result everyone has had experience. But here we leave the general question and note only the odd effect it had in the particular case of Orlando herself. Oh man, beautiful stuff. Beautiful stuff. Um, queer literature has so much to offer everyone, guys. Really, it does not matter, you know, who you are, who you like, uh, what you identify as. 
um, literature just opens us up to the you know the, the myriad manifestations of gender and it's a worthwhile journey to go you know down those paths and and, and see that you know experience is so you know multiple right and those of us who are um, straight men suffer from a certain privilege and and I say suffer because privilege blinds and binds and limits and and li literature is going to help us uh, open us up to all those world views so uh, this is Litscapes celebrating queer literature and pride month and uh, there is definitely yes um, reason a lot of reasons to be proud and courageous uh, about coming out of the closet and um, um, I, I, I celebrate the LGBT community and well thank you all for listening um, we're, we're gonna we're out of time for today's in parentheses episode but it's been fun thank you for again joining us if you've enjoyed the episode don't forget to subscribe share click like uh, all these uh, buttons around here you know the drill all right so just do what you have to do and we'll see you next time get out of here <laughs>